how long you been in Connecticut now? Two months, maybe like seven, eight months. How you liking it so far? So I, I mean, the people show love, but I be feeling out of place. You feel out of place? Why? Because it's slow. It's so paced, and it's not what I'm used to. So you're used to more more lively, upbeat, everyday shit? Yeah, like every day I got something to do all day. I got people to see all day, different people. And here it's like, I'm just chilling like in my crib. I don't really want to be around people. I mean, what's wrong with slowing your ass down? It's nothing wrong. I'm just saying I'm not used to it. I'm trying Jeez. to get accustomed to it. So you never thought about you feel like so wait do you feel like life was moving fast when you when you finally came back here and looked back and like life was moving pretty fast? Definitely. Yeah, you get a chance to chill, watch the watch the leaves fall off the trees. Oh yeah, you get to see real trees. Nah, it wasn't even that. It was me waking up and it being nighttime. <laughs> like real shit. Wait, what? Like me waking up. And it's nighttime. Like, you my day go day. by that fast, like, in New York. Wow. <laughs> Facts. You don't have to worry right, about, right. damn, I'm waiting for this day to end. <laughs> Respectfully, the day is done. It's done. It's over by the with. time you open your eyes, it's done. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck happened that whole day. God. Yeah. See, now, when you say like that, that fast-paced shit just make me cringe. I ain't ready for that fast-paced life, to be honest with you. you I don't like, like city life. City life ain't nah, for me, yeah, though. it can't be. It's overbearing and overwhelming. Like, I like, I'm one of them people that I like to come home, and I like time to myself. I like to roll my spliff, pour my drink, and, and most importantly, I like to reflect on my day. Most and, importantly, I like quiet at nighttime. I expect that. <laughs> I that like too, quiet at nighttime. I don't need to hear sirens and people arguing. I don't feel like we look at it like that. I think we look at it like as transitions and we got so many things we want to do with ourselves that we trying to split ourselves like in so many different areas and so so little time. I feel like it's that. I mean, we all got the same amount of time. Right, but I respect. Yeah, I'm but not when you look- in the city, you, you're doing more with your time. You don't want to relax because you yeah. always hungry. Like, you never settle in. Like, there's no time to sleep. That's why they say we the city that never sleep. Shit, nah, so that don't become exhausting after a while? It's exhausting, but when you want to get to the next level in your life or next level with anything you want to do, it's not exhausting. It's hunger. Okay, I respect that. But at what point are you doing too much? Even regardless, because what's the point of reaching your goals if when you reach there, there's not much of you left? I don't think it's ever too much because I'm not there. But what if you know? what if you exhaust yourself to get there? That's not that's no issue at all. Nah, I'd rather exhaust myself to get there than like take it slow and then wonder like, damn, what else could I have been doing in this time? So you never get those thoughts just because you're always on the go. Because that's what I'm saying. Even if you're doing a lot, doesn't doesn't mean you're doing sufficiently. That's a fact. But I feel like you got better results. You get better results. Yeah, you I mean, doing true. more things. I'm, Even if if not everything pulled through, like you still doing enough things for some of the things to pull through versus you just doing one thing one day and whether it work out or not, that's just one thing you did in that one day. I mean, true, but even a nigga who run fast in the same place for five years, his legs is bound to get strong eventually. So why don't you keep running? Because eventually you're just going to be running in the same place just to have strong legs. What you going to do with the strength of those legs? I think you can do a lot with strong legs. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think that's exactly what people that's running through shit want to do. <laughs> like, hey, have strong lie. legs. I ain't going to lie. Respectfully. She had a great argument for it. Yeah. Saying, like, it really did. I ain't going to lie. You made me think throughout that whole fucking yeah. conversation. You made me think about my respect. It, nigga. I don't care. I we can that. believe in the same shit, but I believe I opposition is needed for everything. Like I, like I believe in order to reaffirm everything that you need, you need some type of opposition to really make you stand ten toes down, regardless. Respectfully. Like you can't believe you what you really believe, believe, and then when yeah. the wind blow you, you get fucking you, you fall down. Nah, I feel that you gotta stand on business all times, at all fucking times, regardless of what anybody's trying to say. Regardless, you know. Nah, I feel that. Shit, nah. So all right, so I see the New York, I see the New Yorkness kicking out of you. You <laughs> witty, What's the New Yorkness? What's that mean? Like it's I said, city life. Yeah, it's city. You feel yeah. Like, yeah. Wow, shit. what's the city life look like to y'all? The city life looks like exactly what you just said. Go, 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 go. 
Really? And to don't me, stop. Yeah. It I, don't matter if you're tired. Like that's, that's what, that's not what really it look like for you? Dirty, 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 dirty. Nah, I don't want it. Because I know some dirty spots in CT. Don't I'm make me go oh, yeah. here. But, but overall, are, but, but, CT don't look dirty overall. I think New I, York overall I'm gonna say. Feel me? Coasting, coast, coasting, coast. All my niggas we coasting. High grade we smoking on the highway we rolling. Rolling, crack a bottle we toasting. Yeah. Welcome to Weed and Whiskey Podcast, the best <laughs> motherfucking podcast in CT. You know we. Hey. All right, see, I before it. I was cutting down. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, but you, sorry, we gotta stop limiting. Premature limit. pump, premature pump. You gotta stop limiting this. We the, in the world okay. now. We in the world now. Okay. We All in right. the world now. We're national. We in the world. International. In the world. International. I okay. Just so you know, that's what the word means. I all right, all right, all right. All right. Yeah. So we are one of the best podcasts in the motherfucking world in all perpetuity. You know, just letting it be known, and we only do great motherfucking personalities. And always, just like every other fucking episode, tonight is no less of that. We have another great motherfucking personality coming straight from Bronx, New York, and anybody who's not from New York. Knows exactly what I'm gonna say. They're full of themselves. What? It shows. Oh hell no! That's how you know they're from New York. Cause I you didn't got say, the I didn't right one. I didn't even say it in a bad way in any way, shape, or form. I see. That's exactly how full you know. Full of myself. <laughs> what that mean? When you full every of New York is full of themselves. All right, explain. That's why you can't stop doing shit. I always have to be undergoing. I was hustling shit because the only way you have that type of confidence, you have to believe in yourself. That's the only way. Y'all full of y'all fucking selves. Right. Ain't nobody can tell y'all about y'all shit. I'll give you that. Exactly. You're recovering that <laughs> so I'm gonna say, fucking well. I'm gonna say, I'm How sorry. do you think about the recovery on that? Wait, recovery? How? It's a recovery, bro? Yeah, you what think about doing? the recovery on that? I'm being nice. That's what him. I meant. That's what I meant. That they pulled it. Like, honestly, to keep it about, a New Yorker can stop it, step in the room and they take over a room without even Respectfully, doing much. we like, make our presence known. Bro, that's why I said there's a few places in this world that makes you feel like you're on your own different planet and New York is one of them. And Respect honestly, just sitting me. in a room with you, like I said, it, it shows that you're hailing straight from Bronx, New York. Like your energy, <laughs> your personality, your confidence, and honestly, your music. It's just Thank everything you. is just is giving the energy of New York. And I, I love that because I love the New York energy because when I see y'all fully, outside, I love the confidence that y'all bring. Like I really do because y'all believe in yourself more than anybody ever, to be honest with you. Like... If delusional was a thing, it would be New York. <laughs> All right, we ain't delusional. I no, think... we have a thing where being delusional is a good thing. Because in order really? for you to really be striving and for you to stand out, you have to be you delusional to be about delusional. yourself. Because everybody's going to tell you. That's a good point. You everybody's going to tell you you're crazy. That's Every dream point. come with delusional. That's a good point. So that's how I look at you guys. And that's why I look at motivation. That's why I'm always trying to reach the New York artists. And like I said, just having you in this room, it's making me feel like we're stepping out even more. Like, And just listening to your music, listen to the fact that you actually have bars. You don't have to rap about the same shit that a lot of the females actually have to rap about to get your point across. Like, That's the type of thing that I actually appreciate you as an thank artist. So you. thank you for blessing me with your presence. Appreciate that. We have damn Jay Lee in the motherfucking building tonight. Jay Lee. What up, though? Ah! What's the <laughs> Insert uh, claps here. I really do genuinely enjoy your music, and and I'm one of those people who I I I like to find new female artists in particular that I actually enjoy and that I can actually listen to their music and add it to my playlist because I say it all the time. I don't like listening to niggas talk about how they get money and fuck bitches. So why the fuck am I gonna die listen to a female talk about how they get nigga and fuck niggas? That's I mean how I get money and fuck niggas. Like I don't want to hear it on the opposition if I don't want to hear it for things that's alignment with me either. Cause that's not where my mental diet is when it comes to my music. That's a fact. So, I, and I like good music. So right. if you can make me li give a good vibe and actually hear some shit in your music, because you do talk about some of the things that you're going through in your music as well, too. You do put some type of transparency in there as well. I can hear when you do. So, And, and I respect that as well. Because music, does their art deserve transparency? 
Facts. That's what makes art great, the transparency of it. Right. I agree. You said almost everything I was going to say, so I'm... Right. That's what a nigga say when he ain't nothing to say. Uh. You're right. Uh. Yep. Can't fuck with my accordance. So, in one of your... Nah. S- oh, okay. Go ahead, go ahead, dog. Go ahead. No, nah, I was going to say, like, honestly, like, I-, I hear the beats behind it and it sounds like drill, but I wouldn't... If, That's if a good the, point. If the tempo wasn't as drill, I would just call it rap. That's you know right. what I mean? Like, you actually putting bars behind it and it's not speeches. You're rapping on drill beats. Yeah, you're rapping on drill beats. Type shit. Yeah, so, and like, and you match it with it. You match your flow with it. So, compliments Thank to you. Thank you. Because I don't like drill music. Appreciate that. I, <laughs> I got that a lot. But that's what brings, to me, your music brings up good balance because you're rapping on beats that make us feel good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like, that's a good balance to me because it's like, one, a lot of people only listen to drill music Primarily because are, of the production. The beats are actually pretty good. Five. Fire. Most I'm of the Be real. Do you know what they're saying half the time until the chorus come on? Right. You're right. Even when you try, you have to look at the fucking lyrics. That's true. Be real. And the beat is the one I really carry That's the song. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. That's the real superhero of the fucking song. The beat. It is. It so is. once once you can actually give us something where you still get the beat that you're looking for, that vibe, the up tempo, the BPMs that you're looking for, but now you can ha- hear enunciation. You hear mm. the words that's being told. You hear a story being put together on there. Or just hearing just you bleed on a track. Right. Simple as that. You can understand it. Like, I like the music that I can understand. Mm-hmm. Respectfully. I relate to, too. Mm-hmm. Most importantly. But I have to be able to understand it first in order to relate to it. That's true. Don't make me just feel... And honestly, to keep it a buck, drill music be sad as fuck. If you really listen When you really do. listen to it. It's talking about your problems... And talking about the negative, like, Niggas parts are dancing of to life. heartbreaks and shooting at another Respectfully. Nigga. The Damn. negative parts of life. I feel like you're the type of person that break hearts for fun. I don't think I break hearts for fun, but I feel like people definitely have that attachment to me. And, like, when I, you know, remove axes or, you know, <laughs> and do right, that well, to them, on, like, on. <laughs> you let it be known in the beginning. You're not that accessible like that. Like we know. I wouldn't say I'm not that accessible. If anything, I feel like I'm too much of an open book. I just feel like my issue is attachment, but my my like I don't have an issue with detachment. So like I could attach myself to somebody. I could lock in with them fully. Feel me? Give them me. But I could also like remove myself. I could also like be cold. Like I could also cut your Gemini ties. I'm a Pisces. Oh God, you're just emotionally. You're trying to hurt hurt people before they hurt you. What? <laughs> Actually, people hurt me before I hurt them, Victim and then mentality. I hurt them back worse, and then <laughs> they hate me, and I be like, "Nigga, you did it first. Like two wrongs make it right. For me, mathematically speaking, two negatives it. makes a positive. I'm just saying. Mathematically, mathematically. whatever you dish, you add dish out, you get back. Nah. I int- no, <laughs> no the intensity I bring, you can't add it. You gotta multiply it. Ah, right, whatever. <laughs> right, whatever. Just come up with the reasons, excuses, and shit. So, do you feel like yeah, you're a toxic person? Ooh, define to toxic. About, ooh, we have to think about that uh, one. Define it. Define toxic. A right, problem. Let's, let's go to one of your bars real quick. Oh. Wait, what about bars? He. he <laughs> Uh, Not trying to put in my card on this shit. Oh, I know what you about to say because I yeah. thought about the same he, thing. He fucked my friend, so I fucked his friend. I fucked his op. <laughs> and I That's had a it. And I had it. The following. The following was what? Did what? That. What's the following? Nah, no, why y'all doing this? I'm just that asking. I, I signed. Oh, for contract for this this part, I ain't signed. You put this out there. Nah, you just bro, to not this. the part that limits can you suggest me. What is this court? You can mm. push it down a little bit. We'll stay. Push the mic down into the holster. Nah, cause is this court? Nah, court. What? I you should sit against. You smoking weed no, is probably I'm the not. best court. I just want to know how. To, I want. Right, are you intentionally toxic? I'm not intentionally toxic. You're just petty happens. though. I'm petty. As fuck. I'm a Pisces. Exactly. I was gonna say you're a Pisces. Pisces are respectfully. Petty. Yeah, you hit me low, I'm going to hit you lower. Respectfully. <laughs> that's what it is. I'm not going to hit you first, though. Like, you feel me? But, I'm but if you harder. hit me first, I'm, I'm going to hit you harder. Respectfully. I, no, that's cool. Because um, as an Aquarian, uh, I'm the same way. But I'm a, I'm just an asshole. 
to keep it about. I'm just Respect an that. asshole. I just don't believe in being nice unnecessarily. It's a waste of my time. I'll be nice. Nah. Maybe it isn't necessary. You it's right. So wait, being nice all the time is unnecessary. I'll be kind to you. I mm. have no problem being kind to you, but I talk some shit while I'm doing kind things. Talk a little shit. Sprinkle a little razzle-dazzle on that kindness. You know, that's just me. Give you little cuss words here and there. Tell you about yourself one, two times. And move You're on. You're just Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> that's You're just Jamaican. That's all it is. <laughs> that's all you just said. Was, I'm Jamaican. I'm Jamaican. I'm Jamaican. I am Jamaican. <laughs> I'm Jamaican. Yeah. Jamaicans do something nice for you, but insult you the whole time they're doing it. That's my mom. <laughs> you make me come out to my bed. I'll make me do this for you. <laughs> He's gonna cheat the whole time. And reminding you how much you fucked up the whole time. They're still doing you the favor, but they're gonna tell you how much you fucked up the whole time they're doing you the favor. No. <laughs> Calling you an idiot and yeah. everything. <laughs> Craziness, man. <laughs> Is there some type of similarities when it comes to the Dominican culture as well, too? Hell yeah. What the fuck? Like, I, it's like, all the same shit. What's the worst form of discipline you went through as a child growing up? I got my ass beat. What? No, my mom was crazy. That's normal for, for I Normal? Know. Yeah. How did you get your ass beat? Oh, was it every way, belt, pan, you name it. I was getting beat with that shit. God damn, what you do to deserve to get beat with a pan? Well, I got a Dominican mom. The closest thing? Do you know what a Dominican mom is? No, I don't. Gang, they hit you with anything they see. I mean, I've been beat with a thorn stick before. A thick made of thorn, um, thorns. I ain't gonna Damn. beat with that, but that sound like it hurt. I had a wire hanger broken on me before. It's not domestic. It's not abuse. By your parents? Though? Yeah. Nah, that's OD. It's life. I feel you. I'm tough. It's discipline. I broke the hanger. The hanger didn't break me. Respectfully. You know? I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have any childhood trauma stories Fuck for that. you guys. Nah, it nice. be like that. You feel me? Oh, you want to talk about childhood trauma stories that have nothing to do with my fucking parents? One of my worst childhood um, trauma stories, dog. I'm the worst to me when I fucking first came up here, bro. I remember one time I was laying on the floor. I had two cousins, right? One grabbed one leg, the other grabbed the other leg, and ran in different directions. Damn, they tried to kill you, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, let's talk about trauma. But it's okay. One of them got locked up in the dry and we turned it on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, niggas wicked, bro. And then the other one got kicked down the stairs and almost fell out the window. All right, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> what was the biggest thing about the slow pace out here that got you? What do you mean that got me? Like, like you treat me or that was, I didn't Nah, like... yeah, you was like, Girl, what the fuck is going on? Everything. It was just like, it's not really like, it's not really like a active music scenery. Like you gotta be in different parts of CT to find that. Like in New York, is everywhere. Facts. It's down the block, yeah. feel me? It's next door. It's your neighbor. It's downstairs. Like, so that's why I feel like it's very slow paced for me, because I'm used to being around people. I'm used to learning from people. People for learning from me. Like us working together. Like me networking and me meeting new people. And here it's not really that. Like nobody really focused on that. They focus on so many different things that it's like, damn, where do I find my people? Like, mm, okay, I get what you're not, saying. So a lot, basically, what you're saying, the people in Connecticut already found their people. Now you're trying to basically find the groups of those people. I wouldn't say the groups of those people. I would just say who's taking the shit as serious as me. I respect that. Do you feel like Connecticut have the same drive when it comes to the music success that they want as what you are bringing to the table? I don't want to say that. I feel like some people are, like, scared to, like, really pursue that. In like, they way? feel like it's not really a career out here, like the music. Okay, I got you. It's like a hobby. Yeah, it's more like a hobby. Like, I know a very few selective people that take it as serious as me. Very few, but it's less than the five fingers on my hand. Mm. And in New York, it's like more than 20, 30, 40, 50 people I know I'm, doing this shit. I'll be honest with you, I feel like you guys just get more entrenched in the culture, if that's the case. Because yeah, there's, it's there's more part of, of our people, culture. There's a lot of people here that really take it seriously. Like, well, like and I can say that at least... At least because I wasn't, honestly, I've been here all my life. This is who I was born and raised. And I wasn't that big of a fan or, like, I wasn't interested in hearing CT music. Mm. But me and him, when me and him started chilling, he started playing more. And I started listening to it. And it's like, oh, shit, this shit sounds amazing. 
Like, I could put it in my playlist where I listen to regular big-ass artists at. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, there's people out here that take that shit serious, too. I have a few questions, honestly. One question I want to ask is, right? So, with you coming to CT now and working with CT producers, are you going to continue to bring in your New York sound to, Hell like, yeah. CT beats? I'm still actively in New York. I'm from New York. That's where I'm from. It's enemy. I don't think she can help it. Yeah, I, so, I don't even think I could try if I wanted to. So based off the song that you made with Chump so far, like how do you feel about that combination? I ain't gonna lie, he definitely made me hop into a whole different bag. Like, and that's why I fuck with him. And I feel like that's what I needed too, like to step out of like yeah, it's like giving New York, but it's not like the typical like New York shit. Like everybody listening to drill, and I feel like when me and him collabed, it was like yeah, drill is cool, but this is rap. Like this the real shit. Like you feel me? And I feel like that's where I appreciate people that do take that shit serious in CT because they step out of a whole different lane like they do their own thing like they don't follow trends like we do in new york new york when something's lit we hop on and we stick on that wave like here it's like the people that are taking music serious they hit in different sounds like they doing different shit like they don't want to stay in one lane they not focused on what's trending they focused on what's different in fact they try to sound as they try to stand out as much as possible yes all right so um the other question was um, so would you transition from New York now to Connecticut? How does that change in terms of how much you're investing to get your music out now? Based off the few the few months you've been here? Um, in terms of money, time, like Yeah, investing. Investments. It's financially, time. Like is it are you do you feel like you're putting in less and getting less, or do you feel like you're putting in more and getting less? You know, whatever. What, what do you feel like you're getting out of it? I feel like I'm giving less, but in a way giving given more but still needing to do more elaborate so i feel like i'm doing less like less of what i was doing in new york but i'm still getting like those major opportunities for myself but in the same sense as like i could be doing more and getting even more again even like faster to the next level i feel like i'm going at it at a slow pace because of where i'm at mm. So do you feel like your environment forced you to slow down in a sense? Yeah. Is it a good thing or a bad thing or a little bit of both? Both. Like what's the what's the give us examples of how it's bad and examples of how it's good for you? I would say it's bad because like I said, I'm not active. Like I'm not really as active in the music scenery as I was when I was living in the city. So that could kind of like hurt my career because it's like there's so many people that I'm not networking with like there's so many spots that I'm not hitting like there's so many studios that I'm not at like but it's also good because it's like I'd rather not be seen as much because when you're seen as much I feel like people don't book you or people feel like you too accessible you're not a star like it's different like now you can't reach me like you can only reach me or see me when I want you to see me mm -hmm. and that's giving star like energy that's the freedom of that that Connecticut actually do bring. Like you pick and choose when you want to be seen. Yeah, like, if you want to be homebound for a week, you can, and nobody don't need to hear or see about you. And honestly, probably unless you're close, since you're close people, nobody's gonna really check on you. Facts. But when you're out, <laughs> it's so foul. It's facts, though. It's, it's true. It's, the truth. it's true, though. It's nah, true. It's true. Yeah, if you go a little bit too long, then people are like, "Yo, you, you're good, though, right?" And then after that, that's it. But yep. here, you can really be as low as you need to. Exactly. But speaking of low, we have to tap into that shit a little bit. Like, you left because of beef. Like, Nah, I don't want to say I just left because of beef. All right, so what's the primary re All right, so what's the primary reason that you came to Connecticut? It's so many reasons. It has to do with being too accessible. I felt like I was getting seen too easily in my city. Everybody knew me, so it's like, nah, I need to step out of that a little bit and, like, not give y'all that access so easily. Like, I need to focus up. And I felt like me isolating myself was a way for me to grow. Like, I would have never grown to be the person I am today if I would have never separated myself from that. Like, yeah, like, when you in the environment, it's like, it's cool. Like, that's what you come from. You feel me? That's what you used to. But sometimes you want something, like, different. You want something better. Like, am I going to, like, stay in that same environment and be in the same shit? Like, be in the same drama? Like, Doing the same shit every day, it gets tiring, honestly. Like, you want to step out of that sometimes and be like, fuck these people. Like, let me focus up on me. Like, 
I already did what I had to do for other people. Like, what am I going to do for myself? And I feel like that's what CT was for me. Like, yeah, I'm in beef and shit like that, but I ain't ducking no smoke, like, either. I felt like I needed to isolate I isolate myself and be out the way. I was too much in a way. Anyway, too much doing too much. Yeah. And when you trying to be somebody, you can't be in a way. That's going to irritate people. But what? that's what I was asking about, the importance of slowing down time to time. Like, when you're on the go all the time, you don't have time to assess all the many things that's going on around you. You don't have time to put it in place and approach it the way you need to approach it properly. Like, it gives... When you're always on the go, it's just open up more room for things to fall apart quicker. Respectfully. Was it, like... I was going to ask about that. Was it, like, a... Is it, like, a slow transition into I'm doing too much? Or were you aware the whole time? Like, or was it... I mean, a fast transition. Like, I feel like... Like, was you waking up one day like, oh, shit. I'm doing way too much. I feel like I wasn't aware. I feel like I was distracted. Um, I was a different version of myself. I was smoking all the time, off the pills, truthfully. So, like, when you, like, and doing that, like, you're not really paying attention to what's going on around you. You're just, like, kind of walking through life. Like, and I had to, like, really go through what I went through. I had to go through getting jumped. I had to go through beef. Like, I had to go through that to know, like, damn, like, where am I going to sit down and slow down? Mm. Like, when am I going to stop and not and, and start paying attention? Life forced you. Life forced mm. me to pay attention. It's funny how life can work, right? It's crazy. The minute what? you feel like you, everything is going your way, but the universe will be like, nah, fuck that. Nah. You know I mean? <laughs> no funny. You know no funny. Though? You know how many times that happened to people and they just don't listen? Yeah. That's they, me. They're forcing the hand. That's me. No, the hand no, no, slap no, 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 you listen, though. Nah, I didn't. No, right she, now, she forced the hand and the hand slapped her. Yeah. Yeah. But that that happens to mad people. Some mad people go through shit and they like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm staying anyway. That's or, a I'm fact. going to put myself back in the situation anyway. But I was, I was going through those thoughts. You feel how, me? How hard was that decision to make? It was very hard. It actually wasn't a decision that I made by myself. It was more like people advising me, like, yo, you need to step out of that. Like, do you want to keep going through the same shit? Like, you want to keep being in these situations? Like, or do you want to grow? Do you want to be in a different, like, environment? Like, what you want to do with yourself? Like, and I and I just kept hearing that with the people around me, and I'm like, why am I not asking myself these questions? Mm. Mm. So you're taking, you're taking life a little bit more seriously? Yes. Okay. 100%. I would definitely respect because I feel mm -hmm. like that's another problem with um people in life. Like, I don't know what the issue is, but the word desensitivity comes to mind. Mm. Like, I feel like a lot of people are desensitized to, to what real life is. Like, people think it's a reset to life when shit mm -hmm. go wrong. You can just do it all over again. Yeah, like, you don't have to deal with the consequences of shit. And, like, shit ha don't have consequences you really just can't come back from. Respectfully. Like, I, I don't know if people can really comprehend that life is, it's as, as as much as life is a game, it's fickle. It is. Life is one of the most feasible, it's precious. A one, it's a one life game. You get one life and that's it. Yep. After you, as life is done, that game is over. And that's the thing too, like, you're not going to get it right mm -hmm. every time. Exactly. Life is not about, that's the, life is not about getting it right. No. There's no right way to live life. There's, There's no not. right way to live life. There's ways to be good. There's ways to be nice. There's ways to be kind. There's so many ways to be positive and shine a light. But it doesn't mean that you have to be that all the time. And when you're not, it doesn't mean you're wrong. Because mm -hmm. then you have to think about yin and yang. In order for life to have a continuous flow, you have to have opposition. That's true. That's literally life. It's all about opposition. So if you're thinking life is going to be fucking sweets, candies, and daisies every single fucking time, you're going to get punched in the nuts or get your, your clit flick. Respectfully. It's true. Hey, what? That's that's the equivalent for girls getting kicked in the nuts. <laughs> clit flick. Yeah, clit, clit flick. flick. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. I was thinking of the bigger picture. I'm like, that's that. Exactly. <laughs> that shit went over my head. You didn't even think about it, did you? Didn't at all. Not one bit. <laughs> Like, like, hard like that, like, like, straight ahead like that. Nah, just a little, like... Or at an angle. Nah, it's like the <laughs> so tip. You got to get the tip. The tip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's 
these questions, I gotta know. I gotta, gotta, know. I gotta know. I think it's a, how do you flick the clip properly for it, for punishment? Because like, you gotta hit something in the back end to make the force. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wait, sidetrack real quick, right? Uh -huh. I've been watching. I watched a video that talked about girls are the only creatures that can fart from the front. <laughs> Hey, that is wild. I, yeah, that's a TMI question. She knows question. what I'm saying. No, she knows what I'm talking about. Question. That's a wild. That's wild. I never like, thought about think that. Think about it. Girls I be really going it. parts of their day with a fart stuck in their vagina. <laughs> that shit come on. And they always make noise. <laughs> I'm done. I don't know. I just thought that was a funny side note. Really. Pussy farts are never silent. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> How did I slip that shit out? That's crazy. You know, it comes out on its own. Just At that point, you lose control. Just win. They have no control at that point. They just have to wait and hope it comes out at the right time. As wait, well. Imagine, imagine ear just... Come, <laughs> imagine you just shoot an ear out your no, dick, bro. No, this was bro. no That's question. This was, wild. A <laughs> this was a straight statement and observation. <laughs> yeah. Imagine you sitting there and just ear just fly out your dick. I would cry. Yo, <laughs> I would oh cry. God. Word about mouth, I would cry, bro. I'm like, ah. You I know mean, your life would be over. Our, our, our equivalent is just basically our dick getting randomly hard. In, in no, that's not, that that's you not, can't not the same equivalent. That's embarrassing. It's just, that's embarrassing for them, too. Yeah, but you could make cough or something. In the no, middle, in fuck the that. Meantime. Picture being in the grocery store in the fucking freezer aisle, nigga, and you just get randomly hard because you're trying to shop for fries. That's embarrassing. Exactly what I said. I just came in for fries. Now I'm leaving with a hard on. <laughs> Next question. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to keep looking through the groceries. <laughs> do you freestyle or do you write your freestyles? I write. You write? Do you feel like there's more power in writing? Of course. Explain. What's the difference in writing compared to just basically spitting off the top? I feel like with writing, it's more, you putting more thought into it because it's like... You write how you feel, but then, like, you could always backtrack and make how you feel sound better. You can edit and revise. Mm-hmm. Would you take somebody else's uh, written track and you do the vocals? What do you mean? Like, you somebody ghostwriter? Ghost right? Would you have mm -hmm. a ghostwriter? Mm -hmm. I feel like, eventually, when you get to that part of your career, music career, you need ghostwriters. Like, that's just what it is. Like, need? I mean, I wouldn't say need, but, like, those are people that are a part of your team most of the major artists we listen to have ghostwriters true and having a ghostwriter isn't bad because at the end of the day you're basically combining different people's ideas and sounds together to make a masterpiece like but can you sell can you call yourself a lyricist if you have ghostwriters you can if you know how to write your own shit and you can write some shit. But imagine, all right, so what if Yo. your catalog consists of most of shit that you didn't write, regardless if you can write okay, your own shit? Okay, that's a little different than at that but point. That's what I'm saying. If, if that's the point you're taking on ghostwriters, no, when you no, get to no. that case, I don't then mean eventually that a catalog. They do all your work or most of your but, work. Or, but majority is a problem. <clears throat> what do you mean, majority? If you, if, if you have ghostwriters for majority of your work in your catalog that's actually out and accessible to people, that's not you being a lyricist, in my opinion. I, I agree with that. Because I like people who can actually write their own art and create That's their own fact. art. That's a fact. I agree with that. But I do understand, on the flip side, I do understand that some people are better at writing it and some people are better at portraying it. Mm. There's a difference. Like, there's a lot of people who, they can write the best essay in class. But to read it out loud is a struggle. That's they can't fact. read it the same way they write it. They can't That's portray it the way they, they want the story to be told, but somebody else can. That's true. It's kind of like poetry, too. It, that's why I, like, I respect the art, but that's why I don't like when people call themselves a lyricist and then you're not like, pulling out all these other people who wrote for them. Mm. Drake made that acceptable. I understand that. <clears throat> yeah, Drake is one of the major people that got like many, many ghostwriters. Do you feel like ghostwriting is acceptable, more acceptable in the society now, especially yeah. after that whole controversy yes. with Drake? I wouldn't say more more acceptable. I feel like it's just kind of what you're like, what it is. It's part just of the game. Just take it. Just take it. I mean, I think. I mean, these these artists are signed to labels that tell them what to do. Like, tell yeah. them what they' about to release. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you have contracts with these people. It's, it's kind of like like you're fully in control of your career. So sometimes you don't even. Unless you're Get that choice. Unless you're independent. I mean, of course, but how many major artists are independent? 
I mean, how many major artists know how to be independent? That's a fact. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem in itself right there. Not everybody's completely knowledgeable in the music industry. So don't you feel like that's a huge discrepancy in what's going on? Sorry. Sorry. I do. Do you feel like you're knowledgeable in terms of how you want to take on an approach with your career and where you want it to be? I feel like I'm knowledgeable, but there's so much more I can learn. Okay. How do you... There's so much more. How do you go about closing that gap in what you know and what you don't know? There's never a way to close that gap. There's always so much more to learn. And the algorithm of music changes all the time. So you can never feel like you fully know the ins and outs of music. You can read books on it. You can study it. I've majored music in, in college. And it doesn't matter because things change all the time. So you don't think they're like a blueprint just to have a viral song? Or think viral, viral songs is in the moment? It's a, it's a moment thing. I feel like it's... Uh, in what time we're in kind of thing because there's a lot of old songs that go viral based off the moment that we're in as well too that's a fact but they don't always like stay viral forever right because times change something else becomes trendy it depends on what you consider viral what is your definition of viral because um because there's a lot of people that argue with you just even getting 2,000 plays consistently every day is a viral video so what's your definition of viral that's me to, like, just... I think consistently getting like 2,000 plays is a viral video. Because I always make the, the analogy, like just having those 2,000 people in one room, that's a lot of fucking people. Okay. But then again, I'm at the point where I set small goals for the bigger picture. I understand if you want longevity in this thing called entrepreneurship, you have to set small goals that's accomplish accomplishable in order to stay sustainable. Because if you have all these long, drawn-out goals, you're never going to get a sense of complete. You're never going to know what it means to accomplish something. So eventually, you're going to give up because you feel like you're just on this long road of going nowhere. So I've learned the importance of setting small goals when you have a big picture ahead of you. I agree. I feel like viral. I could argue, though. I feel like, I like viral. I, I like the devil's advocate. I feel like viral is not the quantity. It's more of like what's timeless. What's timeless? Look, what, what can people never forget? I respect that because now we, because I respect that because um, how many times do you just quote a meme? Exactly. Like that's what I mean. Like, exactly. like that's what I mean. Like, that's, that's literally what I, the point. But I'm also, making. that's what I mean by like that's the same consistent two thousand. You have a two. You have that two every day. Is two. It's not like you get two thousand now and it's just flop. It's a consistent two thousand. I'll take that any day than to get like a a one fixed number and it stopped there. I agree. I feel like for me, it's gradual. It's got. It has to. It's a build up. It can't be a consistent number. It has to keep getting higher. It has to keep getting bigger, bigger. It has to keep reaching more people. That's true. That's what. That's what. Viral but that's what. But at that point, it's not just viral. It's timeless. Yeah. Yeah. It goes hand in hand. Yeah, that's timeless at that point. That is timeless. Because now, when you reach everybody, there's nowhere you can't go without seeing or Respectfully. hearing that. Respectfully. <laughs> Yo, respectfully, I've taken way too many shots of that alcohol. <laughs> I feel great. Do all right, boom. How you feeling? I'm good. All right. <laughs> so you hailing from you New York, right? Best borough, worst borough. Damn, why you gonna do that? We gotta know from where should we go and where should we not go. I'm gonna say the best borough is my borough. There's no other borough to say but where I'm from. But where's Burrow? That's like, damn, you want me to <laughs> some shit. Every time I say my it's opinion, not... everybody be coming and attacking me. Like, I'm going to say a Burrow, the whole Burrow going to come and violate me. <laughs> all right, you're, I'm good. All right, you're I fuck with every Burrow, but I fuck with my Burrow the most because that's where I'm from. I'm all right, we won't say there. worst. Let's say least favorite. Nah, I'm not going to say that because I'm going to keep it a buck. I fuck from, with people from every single Burrow, so I can't even right, say so that. So which Burrow do you visit the least? <laughs> he gonna get his I love right, right, Cap right. Queens. I'm really not doing nothing there at all. <laughs> no offense. I got some good people out there. I'll fuck with them. Like, but it's it's not really much for me to be out there for. All right, so if we want to get some good Dominican food, what's some good recommendations? Thank man. Okay. That's, that's what it I is. don't know it. nothing about the Bronx that I've heard of Dykeman. <laughs> that's in Manhattan. I know. I heard of Dykeman. But before. Dykeman is, is lit. It? That's what all the Dominicans yeah, thought. I don't know what the I, fuck I'm talking Dykeman about. Before. Dykeman is lit. Swear they double park out. Yeah.
spend three days in New York, you're going to start double parking. That's all it takes. I say 24 hours. Actually, no, for real. At least. You be real. If you be in New York long enough, you say fuck it. At most. Your fuck it window just elevate. You're like, you know, fuck these niggas. Y'all doing dumb shit anyway. I'm doing so dumb I'm shit a, back. So I'm going to park my car on the side of the road, turn it off, or leave it on. And just and go get your food. On go get your food. I it. can't believe this sounds crazy to you. Yeah, that's it. I I see it all the time. I just and niggas wait on you. It. Niggas wait on you. Well, there's nothing I understand. That's what it is. This comes with the territory of driving. How you just going to block the nigga in right there? Like, you... <laughs> Niggas need food. What if he Bro, wanna, what if how he, he just going to be hungry? I had the same question when I first seen the street sweep and shit. I'm like, so people just park here? I'm just like, yeah. I was like, so what if they have to go somewhere? And, like, no, they know. And that niggas got no respect for ambulances. For what? For ambulances. Yeah, I ain't going to cop. Uh, they don't got respect for themselves. They be driving mad slow. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care who dying. They be pretending. Feel well, me? My next hated thing when it comes to New York, y'all fucking speed cameras, yo. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. We hate those too. Yo. <laughs> we ain't um, agree for those. <laughs> yeah, like them shits will get you, yo. <laughs> they will get I you. I got a ticket saying when you go 10 miles above the speed limit, you're considered speeding, right? You know they gave me a ticket for going 11 miles over the speed limit? Nah, they be on that. That's 11 how they make money. fucking miles. Bro. They be tweaking on And me. even worse, right? When we went to New York for an episode one time, niggas took three like right turns and got pulled over. <laughs> 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 niggas, then when they pull us over, it's like, oh, you ain't got no front plates on. I'm like, nigga. I think they pulled us over. Ain't nobody ever got pulled over not having no front plates on. <laughs> Damn. No, every time I go to New York, I check to see how many people got their front plates on. Because I'm in my head, I'm like, you pull that nigga over now. <laughs> Yeah, and they never, really won't. They be selective. Exactly. The whole time they're they looking at my license for 10 minutes. They just fuck with who they want to fuck with. I don't think they be like, plates. oh, I'm bored. Let me fuck with this thing. I don't <laughs> think we got pulled over for no front license plate. I don't think so. He was probably bored. Or something. He was trying to meet his quota. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's exactly it what it was. Because it was like the middle of the month coming towards the end yeah. of the month. Niggas definitely trying to meet He's like, quota. I need to make three arrests and I'm good. Yeah, I see OT plates. Let's hope I can get some. <laughs> That's it. Let's hope I can get something. <laughs> Niggas like to pull you over in the terms of hope. No, mm-hmm. for real, though. I don't like that. You know what I hate the most, too? you're not fighting no cases over there. Like, no, I know what I hate most. Why, place. as a black man, should I get nervous just from seeing red and blue lights? No intentions pulling me over, but why do I just get nervous just from seeing it? That's not. That's not right. I shouldn't be like that. We should not be so traumatized a society that just seeing red and blue lights terrify the fuck out of you. No, respectfully. I always just think something's wrong. Like I feel like I Bro, if I, I see a like cop I behind just... me, I go five miles below the speed limit. Subconsciously. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Why should I have to do I shouldn't have they to do that? They don't think you drunk. I see white <laughs> I no, but then again, I see white people speed by them and they don't pull them over. And I'm not That's that exactly brave. What you're supposed to I'm do. not that brave. Man, I've, I've I've learned, bro. A lot. I see a cop coming up in the fast lane. I pulled the fuck over. You're uh, getting of past me. You do, but I'm not too I far ni- behind him. After no, that. I see niggas go around him and speed around. Oh them no, we're not doing that. We and not basically doing go that. in front of them. We not doing I'm that. not that brave. <laughs> I want to be that brave in life. I, I want to be able to look a cop in the eye and say, do you know I pay your taxes? I want to be that brave. I don't think that's a color thing. I think that's a money thing. I want to be that brave. I want to have that much what money. Because what they say, oh, um, what, what they say, when you have enough money, you're not black no more, you're white. What yeah, you, Kodak said, when green. you see me, I'm white. <laughs> you're green after that. <gasps> A lot of people miss it. I'm trying to be seen money. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be seen as money. Shit. A matter of fact, I want to be recognized for a famous person that I'm not. That's all I want. Let me go because you think I look like somebody that I'm not. I just want I just want somebody to go, oh, what do you do? You rap or something? Yes. <laughs> and just let me go. You play ball? Oh, you're famous? Oh, it's okay. You're, let me get your autograph. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Just sign some scribble bullshit and pull off. <laughs> I want white people to think that I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> yes. Like, like I want to be in the to... right place, but make and white that, people uncomfortable. And when they ask you for help. Nah, that pissed me off. No, nah, no, nah, I, I love like it. Like, when I'm in a store and you ask me if I work here. Yeah, I love it. No, I don't like that. 
Do I fucking look like I work here? Do I got the colors <laughs> like I fucking look, work here? Yes, you're black. Like, if I'm in Target and you ask me if I work here, I'm going to be vexed, especially if I have on blue. <laughs> All right, I understand. I, understand. I don't have on red. What makes you think I am a Target? Well, what if you had red on? Would you be upset then? N- yes. No, nah, because I'm guilty by association. <laughs> now I'm, exactly. I'm a black man in red, and I assume that I work in here. Yeah, so you work at Target. So you're telling me I can just put a vest on and go to Walmart and walk out with free shit? And now I have to overcompensate and buy more things because you thought I worked here. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that blunt at? <laughs> you woke up, AJ? Should I shit at my age? Oh, man, smoked it. <laughs> you smoked it? By yourself? Nah, gang, you don't fuck with us, bro. I'm not in the interview. We want to smoke with you. He's always smoking. Me too. I was like, come on now. I told you to put on the floor. I know y'all been waiting on it too. So the point I was gonna pass y'all weed. Like, oh. What's going on? Smoke break. <laughs> smoke break. Two minutes smoke break. Nah, and then, yo. And then we gonna roll out in like the next 10, 20 minutes. <laughs> yo. That's hilarious. Huh? Yeah, this is a good vibe so far. I'm loving like it. Yeah, I'm loving it. We're actually more on topic than usual today consistently. That's funny, though. You really smoked that shit by yourself, though. That was Bro, funny. I was, I'm trying to give y'all y'all space. You told me nigga, I was, wait, I was waiting for you to just reach over and pass it. Nah, I don't know how y'all work. I don't disrespect niggas. Yeah, you just go behind the kid. Look, because you, <laughs> you were, yeah, yeah. Over yeah. Just pass it. Yeah, it don't, don't matter, nigga. We all, we all, I'm going to chill. They be like, oh, you put your hand in the camera. We can't use the shit no more. <laughs> yeah, nah. I feel like y'all would have taken that disrespect. Like, why? Nah, how, nah. How long love? Only because I have a session tonight. So I'll drink nah, but that's what I'm saying. We're going to finish in like 10 minutes. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah. Thank you. I'm just gonna give you a little smoke break so you can like finish up real quick. <laughs> nah, cause I got skip. Yeah, all right, let's get start finished up. Let's start finishing this. Shit. Nah, not those smoke and skip. I was watching him, so I'm like, I didn't see shit. I'm like, where the blood? <laughs> I was, I'm honestly, I was been waiting for y'all to get past that the whole time. <laughs> really? I'm like, that's why I kept the conversation with him. Yo, going. like I said, I just was trying to chill here. Like, nah, you good, bro? But we trying to smoke with you. <laughs> Like, I known I just bro, we know we told you to roll. <laughs> Alright, so this for you, this for you, this for you. <laughs> this for us, bro. Just pass that. Just make sure you pass that, bro. That's all I ask for. Me. <laughs> I'm gonna roll up too. <laughs> In this little bit. <laughs> Helen say like, damn, I didn't even start, get a pull. You gotta start being a little more clear. <laughs> bro, what? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I love a good victim mentality. I don't know why I get joy out of that. Yeah. <laughs> Turn that shit right around like, oh, nah, bro, you didn't speak up. But it wasn't my fault, though. <laughs> How why could did, I be wrong? <laughs> why didn't you tell me exactly what you wanted? <laughs> Trying to respect the space. Bro. I respect it, bro. <laughs> The thing that had me weak was he was smoking like this. I knew I was watching him low key nigga. I'm like, nigga rolled up. We're just like, you know what? This is a good interview. Y'all still rolling? This would have been great content. We are, we are still rolling. We ain't done yet. I know how that goes. Yo, you got, you got me weak, bro. We had a lot of moments in here, but this was one of them. <laughs> Yo. Who hasn't told this nigga that? It's like that is not the that is not the fortieth time I've heard that. <laughs> Thank you. Honestly, that's the best compliment I'd actually get. Honestly. Thank you so much. I feel like my life is gonna be part of the reason we get famous. <laughs> It stands the fuck out. No, it's everybody, 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 it's everybody is those. It's a chain reaction, like. Just start laughing. I, I, I literally held myself a couple times. I'm like, let me stop. 
I get it from my mama. <laughs> I do. And it's funny because it's a small room, so it echoes even more. <laughs> it takes over a whole fucking room, yo. Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> it made me laugh even more. <laughs> oh, man. I ain't gonna lie, low-key blush. That's my favorite compliment to get. It's I, 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 weird and awkward when I get that compliment. It's kind of like telling me I smell good. I swear, those are the two best compliments I can get as a man. Smell good is the best compliment. Yo, you get. bro, you tell me I smell good, I'm giddy. Mm-hmm. I'm <laughs> giddy as fuck. <laughs> Like, I don't even know what to say. Fuck being happy, nigga. I'm giddy. I'm all fucking skin and I'm fucking teeth, nigga. All teeth, smiling the whole way. <laughs> I just put so much work into my cologne collection. Shit. <laughs> you make sure you like your just... Yeah, you get yeah. <laughs> Nigga say, yo, I'm gonna pass this shit. Make sure I pass this shit first to her. This nigga didn't even take two pulls off that Nigga shit. sparked it and passed it. He sparked it right away. I was like, yo, here you go. I don't want no smoke after smoke. This is for you. It was good. <laughs> that shit was real good. <laughs> that was the no care in the world spliff. <laughs> Zoned out. I mean, it happens. Like Told I said, you. I was trying to respect y'all's face. I'm, I'm behind cameras. Nah, no, we're just assholes, bro. <laughs> I, had a, I had a friend dead ass sitting in a, a cypher with. It was just three of us. And smoked the whole spliff and talked the whole time. And, smoked the whole, and I didn't notice until that shit was done. He's like, oh, shit, my fault. And passed us this. I'm like, nigga, yo, what? I don't want that shit no more. <laughs> and he ain't have no more weed. I had to roll up after that. I'm like, nigga, this is the worst thing you could have done. You know what one of my favorite Jamaican sayings ever in this world is? Yo, fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I deserve that. <laughs> That's one of my favorite sayings. Just telling something, yo, fuck, fuck are you? I don't know. I just get joy out of that. My life, my life be making these levels peak. All right, let's 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 close this bitch out. Let's close this bitch out. Let's close this bitch out. <laughs> All right, let's jump into this real quick. All right. In your, in your perspective, what makes a man friendly? Everything. Do you like friendly men? I don't know. What at what level? Like dating wise or just in general? In general. Mm-hmm. No, dating wise. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't like a friendly man. But what makes him friendly though? You talking a bitch is too much. But he's a rapper too. I don't give a fuck about none of that. So so the same charisma that got you to like him, he can't just be as a person. Nah, he could be that as a person, but he got to be selectional with who he is that person with. He so could be that person with family. Uh-huh. He, could be, he could be that person with his mans. With bitches, no. Out. <laughs> what you need to be, have charisma for. You ever heard of saying that strangers is the best person to be kind to? Don't date me. <laughs> don't date me. If that's your mindset or your morals, don't date me. That's true. Why? Because it's other bitches that's going to jack that. But me, I'm not jacking that. Respectfully. Simple. Respectfully. You can't be nice. Nice for what? <laughs> no, honestly, I, I like, for me, I play the double standards because, I like, I really believe, like, when you're in a relationship, you have to be cautious with how you move about shit. Come on. on Anything could shit. come off any type Anything. of way. Now you leading a bitch on. Now she feel like she could get friendly back. Now I got to beat her up. Now we got a problem. All right, so how do you feel about um opposite sex best friends in a relationship? Dumb. I ain't going to lie. I got opposite <laughs> se- sex best friends. But you feel what me? What the fuck? My nigga going to jack it because... I, I'm the bro to these niggas. Like, I done never fucked these but niggas. But that's this too. No, it's different. Where I come from, you have to have bros. Like, that's just what it is. You got to have people looking out for you, bro. Like, we're in the trenches. We're not in a regular environment. So you got to understand that I come with bros. But they really bros. Like, that's they really not sis. niggas that I'm fucking... Nah. That's really sis. Nah. That's impossible? Nah. Nah, I'm not jacking. If you can be just bro, nah. and you can be, well, if you can be just yeah. sister, then why they can't be sister? Y'all say sis, 
So it's what? completely different from so, my definition of bro. I'm not saying our, like, girls. I'm saying my. I'm my own so, person. But So my thing is, right, what do they women have to say about you being just a sis? I am. Listen. And it's up to... What do you mean? Like... No, no, listen. My, to interject, any nigga, I don't care, any nigga who blatantly, publicly refer to a girl as their sis and they're fucking her, you're weird. That's a fact. That's uh, That's a fact. You're weird. That's a fact. That's, That's straight up. That's a fact. That's straight up because now fact. you're telling me you can fuck somebody and call them your yep. sister? That's a fact. It's given delusional. Girls have a lot of cousins. Cousins fuck all the time. This. Wait, what cousins? But sisters and brothers don't. You talking about? <coughs> Let, <laughs> where the fuck we going with this? Yeah, thing? we going on some nah, incest I'm just, shit. I'm just rebuttaling his statement real quick. Cousins fuck. That that's more normal than brothers and sisters fucking. I think they both as bad. It depends on where in the fucking state and country you listen to and speak. Oh about. wow, no. I think it's all Because remember, in royal families, royal families, they believed in having sex with somebody oh, in your family to stay in, cousins, to keep yeah, the bloodline yeah. within the family. I'm going to keep it a buck. I don't believe in that. But like I said, I only you, say do, that, that's what I'm saying. I only say that, right, because I have family members, feel me, that have done that. And my, like, third, second cousins come out with health problems, like, health issues, you feel me, like... Really, you're not supposed to mix the same bloodlines. Like, a child could come out with a lot of def- defects because of that. So, that's why I say that. There's so many different ways to view that. Like, I've, I, I've experienced that in my family. And a lot of my cousins have real bad health problems. It's crazy. I'd rather stay horny than have sex with my family. Yeah, I'm good on that. I'm going to keep it a, a buck. There's so many people in the world. It's just kind of weird. And plus, for men... Women outnumber us four to one. And second, some of them sell pussy. It is so easy. Fuck being smarter. Some of them sell pussy. You don't have to go out your way. You can literally just go to the right website and choose the woman you want and And tax her how much she charge. Exactly. It might not be that it might not be the exact model. Maybe something. Sort of maybe like kind of like it's okay. We buy used cars all the time. Respectfully. But you in that position where you gotta buy pussy. So at that point, you really you like, have to get what you get. Yeah, you, you don't have a choice, bro. Beggars can't be choosers. Exactly. exactly. Tis life, you know. Tis life. Tis motherfucking life. So New York, oh, New York girls are always known for being their aggressors, especially when it comes to approaching men y'all want. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't really the aggressor in that. Oh, you like sense. to be approached? I, it's not that I like, it's that you have to. You have to? Mandatory. I'm not looking for it, so it's like if you wanna interact, especially on a male or female basis, you gotta approach me first. I'm not looking for that, and I don't care for that. Are you approachable? I feel like I'm approachable when you really get to talk to me, but you gotta give me something to talk to you about. Like, I'm not gonna have a senseless conversation. All right, is it true when they say if you make a girl giggle, you can make her cheeks jiggle? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends how you look at it. <laughs> I'm just asking What's, the inquiring minds. <laughs> I, I got one. I got one. What's the best pickup line somebody ever said to you? Hmm. I can't really remember one, to be honest. No, it wasn't one that stand out that, yeah, that just last. Do you feel like you settle for the men you go for? I don't feel like I settle. But I feel like I give them very high expectations, and when they don't meet them, I'll be out. You just hit a, break their hearts? I wouldn't say break their hearts, but like at that point. Uh, I feel like some people deserve their heart broken. You feel like that? Of course. You got to go through it. You yes. got to go through it. You got to go through You think it. if you don't do it, somebody else won't? That's true, but I ain't out here doing that. I mean, it's okay. It don't serve me no purpose. It do. It don't make me no money. There's always one per- Listen, if you don't have a reason to do anything, as long as it don't involve her harming people in any way, shape, or form, if you don't need any other reason, it's because I enjoy it and just because I want to. 
For that. That is enough reason to do anything. For that. I don't enjoy breaking hearts, though. No, nah, but I feel like... The reason I say I feel like some people deserve it is because some people become the best person they ever been after a heartbreak. That's a fact, but I don't want to be the reason for that heartbreak. No, nah, you no, nah, you're not the reason for the heartbreak. Look at it, you're the reason for them being the person that they become. See, you look at you got to look at the bigger picture, girl. Break that heart. You're doing that person a, a favor. <laughs> you know, ain't no wrong with that. I don't know if that's. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, know where he going with this. I don't know. I don't know if that's I'm fair. trying to catch where he going with it, but I don't know. I'm just being an asshole, a vindictive asshole. <laughs> I think, you know. Then they got to suck themselves. Yeah, a, <laughs> a lot of problems arise when people get their heart broken. So. Man, sorry for you being a weak human being. Anybody got any closing words? Don't be a bitch. It's okay to be vulnerable. But don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch, but it's okay to be vulnerable. That's my closing statement. Okay, to to piggyback off that is, don't cry to a girl that you're just fucking. Yeah. Oh, don't please don't do that. I agree. Gentlemen, please, I please, beg of you, please don't do that. It's not gonna it's not gonna work out for you. If y'all don't have no rapport, no, y'all didn't cut. If you were never the little spoon, no. Don't cry in front of her. Yeah, she don't know your mama, my nigga. After we fuck, let me cry on your shoulder. You just said that. Actually. Future no. also lied about doing drugs. Uh-huh. Don't so, cry please. in front of women. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you know she can't fart around you, you can't cry around her. Nah. If you ain't never smell her shit, you cannot cry around that lady. All right, that's my cue. <laughs> <laughs> let them know where they can find you. They can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Damn J Leaf. That's D A Y U M J A Y L E E. I love the consistency in how you say your name. Thanks. It's always the same way every time you say it. For me, I, I told her it sounded like a producer tag. It's a tag. Yeah, real shit. And y'all can follow uh, Weed and Whiskey Podcast everywhere. Weed and Whiskey Podcast, except for Instagram, WNW Podcast. Support us, make us rich. Yep. And in turn, we make dreams for other people come true. Mm-hmm. We don't know. It who might we be. Are. It might be you. If depending on what you do, if you ain't doing nothing, we're not about to have you up here. You could keep listening and help us get rich. But we appreciate you anyway. Uh yeah. Uh, say no to drugs unless it's good drugs. Say yes to weed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't knock any people for the drugs that they do. That's why I say I only do good drugs if you're gonna do drugs. That's just my advocacy right there. Be great. Be amazing. And you know, so close to go. Bye.